In this video, I'm going to take a generic USB phone charger. It's just a 5 volt uh, power supply. And um, we're going to try and modify it so it outputs 12 volt because um, 12 volt is a useful voltage. And we all have some of these are lying around the 5 volt uh, style power supplies. But sometimes you need 12 volts to drive maybe a 12 volt relay and some circuit that needs 12 volt. And you can buy them, but if, if it's easy enough to convert the 5 volt output to 12 volt, then uh, we can do that. Um, this particular one is a cheap one from a shop called Poundland. But um, if you watch one of Big Clive's videos, he's um, reviewed and tested it, and it is actually a, a safe one. It's, um, it's not one of those cheapy ones that are actually dangerous. This one's quite good, actually, and it's good value for, I think, two pounds in Poundland. But I've already started to pry it open. And it looks like if you start on this side, you can crack the adhesive and you can just about get in there. I think they used to be clipped. They've changed it slightly, the design. So if we can just work along the edge there, we should be able to clip it open. There we go. And it just has these little um, spring-loaded pins that sort of poke into these slots there. there we go. Zoom in a bit. So um, first thing we need to do is we need to change the output capacitor because that's not rated for 12 volts. I think it's this one is about 6.3 volts. So we need something at least 16 volts. There's a voltage divider between ground and the um, uh, auxiliary winding on this transformer. And that's how it senses uh, the, um, the secondary voltage. Uh, it doesn't use an optocoupler. <clears throat> so if we intercept that re um, resistor divider the two resistors that makes a voltage divider and we just pull the one that, that goes to ground slightly down we should be in theory um, be able to knock the output voltage up slightly this must have something to do with the feedback circuit here so um, we'll look a, a bit of at the uh, schematic diagram and from that we should be able to work out where we can um, change the feedback circuit so we get a higher output voltage. So what we can do on this little 5 volt switch mode power supply to try and convert it to 12 volt output is we'll change the output capacitor to a higher rating one. And if you look at this, uh, this chip here, the control circuit seems to be a divider network which looks like it's this R6 here and R7 to ground here. And uh, it says FB, which is probably feedback. So I think if we were to bridge another resistor across this surface mount resistor here, um, then the voltage would be lowered there and it would up the voltage on the output. But if you look at the, the ground here, it goes around to that pin number seven there. And this resistor goes to pin number one. So what we could do is just tack a, resi a, a resistor across these two pins. That should force the voltage on the divider down, and hopefully it'll boost the output voltage to what we need. So let's give that a try. We need to unsolder this capacitor here, this one here. So I'm going to get the solder wick out and try to carefully unsolder it, and hopefully that comes out fairly easy. They've bent the leads over, which is a bit annoying, but um, we'll give that a try. We'll see if we can get that out. Let's take note of the polarity. I think uh, 820 microfarad, I believe. This is a thousand microfarad, 16 volts. Let's flow a bit of solder onto that. There we go. That's our capacitor with a higher voltage changed. So now we got this big chunky capacitor in there, so that can cope with the higher voltage. 
if we link a resistor across these two leads of this chip, we could skew the, the, the voltage across the voltage divider to trigger to produce a higher output voltage. So let's try, let's try that. Let's throw a little tiny bit of solder over those pins. So it makes it easier to detect this resistor across there and we'll see which output voltage we get once this is attached. Right. That should hopefully aid us in getting a different output voltage. Tack uh, some wires for the 240 straight across here. It'll just make it easier for us to test for the AC input. We'll give it some juice. Now we can apply 230 volts AC directly to it. And hopefully we'll get a different output voltage. Not too high. If we're lucky, we'll be spot on 12 volts, but I doubt that very much. So uh, let's hook up a voltmeter to the output. Well, that's better, 10 volts. So um, I think we're nearly there. I, I suppose I could put a potentiometer across it. I don't really have a 10K pot or something like that could probably help me adjust it a bit, a bit better. But I'm gonna be lazy and just trying to pick the right resistor. So that's an 8K resistor. So if we lower it slightly, um, let's see which ones I've got here. Let's try a 6.8K. See if that works. Hopefully it'll be spot on 12 volt. Otherwise we'll have to use a combination of resistors. Which I want to try and avoid. Let's see if there's any short circuits. That looks pretty good to me. I have to remember to connect it. Right, mains applied, contact. 12.6. I would say that is acceptable. I assume under a slight load it, that might go down slightly. So 5.6k I think is a good value. Right, let's... Uh, Try and mount that little resistor in there. See if we can get it in there nice. I think that's, uh, that's acceptable. We'll just bend it slightly. So there's no short circuits. Right, let's give that a test and uh, we'll see if we still have 12 volts of the output. 12.7. I'm pretty happy with that. So all that needs to be done is the output capacitor needs to be changed for a higher voltage one. And uh, one of the feedback resistors we just bridge with a 5.6 ohm, a kilo ohm resistor. And you can always remove the USB socket and just tack some wires directly onto there. If you're going to, in this case, I think that's a good idea because we can make it into a dedicated 12 volt power supply. So let's try to unsolder this um, USB socket. So I prefer it be a dedicated 12 volt power supply. Don't want to blow up anything that's made for 5 volts. Right, let's gently pull that socket out.
that's it. So that's the negative. That's the positive. One thing I would mention though is once you remove this um, USB socket, um, you because it's the negative connects across the body of the socket to this uh, um, capacitor over here, which is like an interference capacitor. Um, so you need to link across because that link gets broken because it's the metal shell of the of the socket that makes that connection. So I've added that link in because uh, these things are quite important for interference sometimes. Just be aware if you remove that socket like I did. I only noticed it afterwards. And I think these little wires should be replaced for some proper mains rated cables. Right, let's get rid of these. It actually indicates live and neutral there. That's good. So we'll attach our live there. And our neutral. looks the part. It says 5 volt 2.1 amp so that's no longer correct so I'll just write 12 volt there on the output. I decided to test the 12 volt output with a load so I used a 12 volt halogen bulb um, that's 20 watts which is plenty um, and it lit it no problem so 20 watts at 12 volt so it can handle a bit of current it's also a really good way to burn your fingers I my curiosity got the better of me so I thought I'd try a pot on there and I put a much higher rated voltage capacitor I wanted to see if I can reach 24 volt so I've got this 50 volts uh, 2200 microfarad capacitor jammed into those little holes there and I've got a um, I believe a 20k pot and a little limiting resistor so that when I turn the pot full it stops before so it doesn't um, short out completely so let's have a look if we turn it on what happens so unfortunately now the lowest voltage we can go is about 6.7 volt but look what happens if we turn the pot we can have 9 volts we can have 12 volts and we can make our way up to 24 volts now this is really stretching it i think it's stretching the design limits but i'll do some testing to see how well it holds out but uh, if we go past that it still climbs but then that's it it doesn't like that so um i would say 24 volt is the max which is a useful voltage and uh yeah so it's nice to know that uh, this is possible. Well, there you go. Uh, your cheap little USB phone charger from Poundland. It's good quality. It's worth the two pounds. And it's also a potential 12 volt power supply. If you like these kind of videos, um, leave a comment. Please subscribe to my channel. We can have a discussion if you have any ideas what uh, I can make a future video about. I really enjoy this kind of thing and um, I hope you enjoy it as well. So see you next time.
bloody hell, it scared the bejesus out of me.